Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on Ravenport. We are going to carry straight on from where we left off in the last episode, so let's get to it. Must be a few other, but those two trailers would make a bit. I don't want to sell the skid steer, we've got, actually we've got all that hay there, I could take that and sell it. Again, it's not a vast amount of money that we get for the hay. Let's park you up here a minute and we'll have a look. What are the prices doing right now? We go and have a look over here. One of those is hay. We're all above 100, I suppose, per 1,000 litres. That's, that's not too bad. That would keep us going. Let's feed Cerberus a minute. Put that down to five times there. Right, uh, there you go. We'll feed Cerberus and let him have a bite to eat. Just watch him chow down his dinner. And then... Right, stuff that down pretty quick. Let's go and skip the night here, like this. I will go, you know, I'm just going to go for the maximum of 14 hours sleep. We go for the full night. And 30, yeah, <laughs> $34,000 in vehicle leasing costs because of everything we've got up the top. Plus 6,000 in loan interest. We're now minus $20,000. That was that 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 didn't quite work out according to plan. Those have all gone up though. Those are all up quite high now. We've got some silage there we could go for. And I got 8,000 liters of oats. It's not worth it. Oats, it's not worth it. Chickens, that's all good. Water, I've got enough water for them. These are all looking pretty good as well. So I've got no issues there, and there, see, it's another couple days before those are going to do anything. Um, right, well, we're not going to get anything from that. I don't want to go selling the oats. Well, it, that's got to stay in there, ready for, so we'll, we'll load up first. The first thing we'll do is we will go in here. Um, I'll just tell you what, I'll have a look in there, and I'll go there, and... I am able to borrow some more. I got a $2.1 million loan at the moment. I am able to borrow some more. How much I can borrow, we absolutely don't know. Now, we've got hay lying in the field up there that we've got ready to go and test our baler right at the very end of this series. And yes, that's going to be a lot of fun. But it does mean that we're going to be bailing with long grass. And uh, that's, that's not an ideal situation, but we'll go with it anyway. Right. I'm not going to unload that. I'm not going to change this at all. I'm just going to go with it like that. Because if we try and unload it, we know that the actual bales are bigger than the bales that are depicted by this mod, unfortunately. There's nothing that we can do about that. Eventually, like I've said several times already, I'm hoping that we will get... A mod that will work better with the small bales but for now we'll just have to stick with what we got which is this one let's bring this one in here and I'm hoping just a, a simple unload on the trailer will allow all of these but you know actually we don't even need to do that I could just I can offload to the side I can do that if I go oops all right I've just say it's two hundred and two dollars per bale I definitely didn't mean to do it like that. That was that wasn't quite part of the master plan. Let's bring them there, and uh, I need to press U to stop them loading, and then I want to do that. Now the big question is, if I do it like that, is it going to drop it in the middle, or is it going to drop it further forwards? It's just going to drop it right there. It's actually slow to sell them. Seven to, seventeen, and that's almost eighteen thousand that we sold right there. That's pretty good. Right, now I will load these back up again. And do that once more. Like that. And then... If I go like this. There, and do that once more. That's We've got six bales left. It's another six that... We, I tell you what, we've made a reasonable bit of money out of these bales. That's, that's not been too bad at all. Uh, bring them over there like that. And then we've got some more. So and it's $100 a bale. $100 a bale. <laughs> that's quite impressive. That is a seriously impressive amount of money. Let's go and have a look at our finances now. Uh, today, right there. So the only thing that we've sold so far, $27,000 in sold bales. 
That's pretty, that is pretty impressive. Now I'm going to go back over to the farm and we're going to see what we've got in the way of wool over there. The eggs, I don't think it's worth, it's, it's not worth bothering with the eggs. I'll, I'll take a shortcut in over here a minute like that. And uh, no, we've only got one full pallet on each pen at the moment with the eggs. It's, it's not worth bothering with. It honestly isn't. I think... It, you know, maybe we, maybe it would be worth bothering with. Maybe it would actually work. But honestly, I think with the amount of time it's going to take to get those all the way out of there, it, it, it really isn't worth the hassle. And the same with the wool. Not really worth it. Now, we've got... We can use standard things. But I believe that this one right here... Small square, round, 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 mission pallets, lumber pallets, egg boxes, cotton modules. We can load cotton modules on this trailer, and that's something that I would like to do. I'd like to use the standard cotton loader as well as this trailer as well for the cotton. So it's going to... I don't want to get rid of this one. I don't want to sell this one. Um, so we'll drop that one there a minute. And we will sell those two trailers over there. So I'm going to drive them to the dealership, I think. If I hook them up, we drive them all the way over to the dealership and we sell them. I've still got five times speed ticking over at the moment. I need to go up and have a look at the cotton and see how that crop is doing up there. So let's just hook those on and skip up through. And here is cotton growing in the fields, partway grown at the moment, which is looking quite good. All right, that's... 100% fertilized. That would be probably the third growth stage now. The fourth growth. That's one before harvest. So we've seen that one and we've seen that one. But we missed whatever that stage was there. Which I'm personally a little bit disappointed that I missed on out on that one. Because I would have wanted to see it. But um, well, well, we'll live with this. So it's, it's nearly ready for harvest. We're getting towards ready to harvest. I wonder if I can go at top speed all the way to the dealership. I know that I can go at top speed part way, and that's where I was going top speed with the tractor and didn't quite make the turn there, and so I scattered things across the road. It's this bit right here that I struggle with. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I managed to correct it. This this lorry is really, really difficult to corner with at speed. It really is. It's probably one of the toughest ones to corner with at speed. But I did it. That is, that is the only important thing right now is that I actually managed to do it. And I did it without coming to terrible, terrible grief. So I'm going to put that one right there. And I'm going to unhitch. And I'm going to come out of there. That's going to get us some money back. I don't know how much money back that's going to get us. But it's going to get us a little bit. Which means that I go in here like this. And wait, what? Oh, oh no. I thought I owned them. I don't. I don't own them at... This is terrible. I leased them all. Alright. Okay. Mr. Bank Manager, how much are you going to let me have? We're going to start spamming the space bar now until we've... We need 200,000. Right, well, we've got, we've got seven harvesters. That's eight harvesters. We want a little bit extra for some other things. You know what? I'm going to give you a save game file with the loan maxed out on the amount of stuff that we've got right here. And I'm curious if anybody is actually going to be able to make this work. Uh, you can pay back some of this immediately if you want to. But uh, you, you may not be able to pay all of it back. Because I might just decide to go and buy one. Oh, there we go. Three mil we've got three million dollars. That gives us $837,000 to play around with at the moment. So let's switch you off a second. And then we want to go over here. Now, I said eight of these. Eight of them. So we're going to lease this one right here. Yes. Okay. So there's one. And two. And three. And four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Right. We have just leased eight machines. I don't know how many hired helps we can have working in the field at any one time. I'm thinking if we plan this out a little bit, 
we can have one hired help starting on that side and one hired help starting on that side. We'll probably want to just manually do a couple passes across the top end, maybe up there. Same down this end, actually. We could bring one harvester all the way up here and just start the hired help working across there and do... Couple, well, maybe we just manually do a couple passes along the top end ourselves. We start a hired help working on that side, and we start one on that side, and then that will sort of start working across that field. This over here, we start one at the top, and we start one down there at the bottom. That takes care of six. Uh, we'll have one harvester that we manually do just a few bits along the tops, things like that. So we'll take one more harvester, and we can drop that one somewhere in the middle of this field, because that's the biggest field. And just let that one start working away on that field there as well. And that's eight harvesters working in the field. I don't know exactly how many we can have working at any one time, but we can soon find out about that. You, we, we got to do something about you. you, you you're a bit of a, a, a sad job sat there all on your own at the moment. Um, but we need to start driving these up the road. The one thing with the cotton harvesters is that you, you can't, like, compress the bit at the front. You can't squash that in. And also, something that's very strange to me is they don't have any flashing beacons. You've only got the option for putting the hazard lights on, which seems a little bit of a strange kind of only option. I mean, the hazard lights are put out so that you can easily see them, but still, it does seem to be a little bit of a strange option. Now I gotta move eight <laughs> eight of these all the way up to the field. And we'll do this while the cotton is still growing. So I've got at the moment we're what are we on? We're on five times. Let's speed that up to about fifteen times. Let's go thirty times. We'll do that on thirty times speed like that. And we'll leave that on thirty times speed. And we'll go cruising on up this way. And we can start parking these up in various different locations so that they are ready to immediately fire up once the harvest needs to get underway. So the first one, I think we will take all the way over to the corner of that field over there. So it's ready to start doing over that side. And then we're going to get another one. We've got to take several up to the other sides. Uh, you know what? Just driving these up the road is going to be a slow and tedious job. Now, we know that we've got some machines. We, we, we've got some low loaders. But maybe it would actually be worth trying out a couple of the low loaders just to see if we've got a low loader that would do this job. Like, would it actually take a cotton harvester and carry it up the road? Or is the cotton harvester just a little bit too big for it? We know that some of them... They're too big for this sort of thing. They just don't like it at all. So I'm going to bring you in over there. I'm going to park you right there like that. And I'll go to the next one. But I'm going to go into the shop a second. And I'm going to go there. And it's low loaders that we want. Was that there? Right. That's the only one that I've got. I don't have another one. This is, this is the only one that we've got. Now, I don't think that that is going to carry a cotton harvester. I really don't. I'm going to buy that one, 22,000, because I'm sure that people would want to use it anyway. So I get that one there, and, oops, jump out of that. We'll go and get you over here, and we'll get that gold, gold offer, gold, gold hoffer thick, well, whatever you call it, the, 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 the transporter. We get the transporter onto this one. We'll just stretch, move it out a little bit, and we'll have to probably stretch it forward a little bit as well. But I don't think that the inside of the wheels is enough to be able to use this one. And unfortunately, I know that there are some, like in real life, there are actually transporters that can use, that can carry large vehicles like that round, but they don't seem to be available in the game. And this is something that I really don't like. I don't like that you're not allowed to use um, the big transporters. It just doesn't make any sense to me at all. And I've, I've never really seen any either. Like, I've, I've not, we've not really seen very much in the way of mods for them, which is a bit of a shame. So let's stop you there. I'm going to run you over to this side. We'll, we'll jump into this nearest one right here and start you up now as those wheels 
It all depends on whether those wheels are too far apart or not. Right, we bring that round here. And I've seen plenty of videos of the... Um, the com... The, like, the actual combines in the wheat harvest right across the US. They load all of those combines up onto big old lorries like this. Um, all the headers, everything. It all gets loaded. It does look like it's going to get on there. Right, that's that's gone up on there with absolutely no trouble at all. And I now can't... I know that in FS17, you had to put this one as close to the front as possible if you wanted to draw the back in at all. So we put that one on there. And then we come over here. You know, by the time we get this thing unhitched and then hitched back on and so on, it probably would be quicker just to go and do it the normal way. Just drive them up the road. Right, we bring that one onto there and hook you on like that. And then... Yeah, see, the combo, the, the, the harvester stays with the bit that's hitched on to the front. And then the wheels at the back, you bring them in and just kind of nudge them up like that. <laughs> Not the tidiest way of doing it, but it works. We have got the thing loaded up here. Look at that. That looks fantastic. Right, that genuinely looks, that, that really does genuinely look awful. Awful? Fantastic. Doesn't look awful. at all. That, that genuinely looks awesome. I don't know why I said awful. It looks aws awesome is the word I'm looking for, not awful. The big issue that we're going to have, of course, is the traffic. We've got cars here. Now, I do need beacons on this. I've got beacons on the back, but I've no doubt that I'm supposed to have hazard lights on as well. So we'll put those on as well. And we go whizzing up the road. Is it going to hit? No, it's not going to hit the tree. You know, I think once we get used to loading these, it's definitely going to be faster doing this. That has loaded on there all right. So, of course, the next question is, would the combines be able to be carried around on one of these? We'll have to test that. At some, actually, we could do a quick test up the top end. That's another thing that we can go and test. We can find out if combines could actually be loaded up onto this without any issues. Like, is have, have they changed the widths of a couple of things? in order that the combines can now load properly. So we're, we're going to unload this one over the other end next to where the combine is anyway, or the two combines. So we'll also be able to test the two. Now we can go racing up here. Uh, no issues with the speed. Doing a grand job. Uh, we haven't grounded out onto the bottom at all yet. That doesn't mean to say that we won't, but I know that was a major, major problem with it in FS17 was the trailer catching on the ground. It was like the big serious complaint with this. Um, it was practically impossible to use the thing um, if you'd extended it in any way, shape or form. It, it just wasn't going to happen. So we will dump you there and I will run into you like that. Start forwards, you can climb down off of that one and I'm just going to bring the cotton harvester over to there and I'm going to stop it and then I'm going to run over to this combine over here so that we can just do a quick test to see if the ideal combine can actually be loaded up there. So I'll hit unhitch that one and then I will bring the combine over here. Better if we can reverse it on. I don't think this one's going to fit because that does seem to be a fair bit wider underneath than that cotton harvester is. Right, the, the centre of this machine definitely seems to be a fair bit wider than the cotton harvester is. And one of the big complaints about this tool in FS17 was the fact that you couldn't make the plates on the main bed any wider. But it does fit. Look, it goes on there. It actually goes on there and it sits, so maybe the um, the trailer itself has been made a little bit wider this time round. So that everything, you can actually load the stuff up on there. But we, we've now put that, we've put that to bed, I feel. That has now been put to bed. We can actually use this trailer properly for the big machinery. You know? and, and so I'm thinking that we will use it more in our new series when we get that one going. Um, it's, it's definitely something that it, it, it kind of fits with this whole having the big machinery anyway. Like if, if that's what we're going to be doing in that series, it would fit very nicely. So we'll take this one and we go whizzing off back to the dealership. There's two 
cotton harvesters delivered. We've got crops growing in the field. It's quarter past two now. We've got the when we've got two harvesters out. Um, I would say that no matter what, we'll wait until the morning before we start doing the actual harvest. Uh, it's very likely by the time we get back from the dealership, we're going to be ready to do... Um, time we get back from the dealership we're going to be ready it's, it's going to be just about ready to start doing the harvest i would think uh, once we load up this one but on the flip side of the coin that's not really going to give us enough time to be able to go and do the whole harvest and i'd like to be able to do it all in one day so if we skip one more night after we've done uh, got these vehicles up there then i think that would work out better so i can just bring you down to there and quickly unhitch it like that Drop you over there, and then I can run over here, and we can start grabbing these and, and load them up. And it's definitely, it's de it is definitely going to be quicker. I know that we've got to drive that one back. It takes a minute or two to actually get back here to the store, but I still think that this is quicker. I bring that one up there like that. It's nice and straight. Load it up onto there. Bring that one back so that it goes right back to that one up there, and. There we go. Right, shut you off there. And then this one, in theory, I should be able to just bring that one back. And he should load up without getting in the way of the cotton harvester in front. I'm hoping. Load that one up there. And that is perfect. Absolutely spot on perfect. Right, car coming through there. There's another one up there. There's no train coming. So I can go whizzing up there. And then I'm going to have to just... You know what, I'm just going to go off to the side here. I know that I've just ripped that sign down and I'm carrying it up the road. Quite honestly, I think that's fine. We'll we'll take it with us as a little... Well, I think I've dropped it. Or is it... No, it's... Yeah, I think I have dropped it now. Right. This one here, I think we will go right up to the very top end of the other field. We, we want to put another cotton harvester next to where we left the last one. And then... Um, we're going to want one just here on his front corner. But this one here, I think we'll take this one right up to the very far end. I'm going to want two of them up there. One for me to drive personally. And then the other one, this one here, will be for starting at that far end. To start on the big field on our right hand side. And... Then we're going to be dropping one here, just where we are right now. One down there, like I said. Uh, another one over there next to that one, which will work on the field across the road. And that's all of them. That'll be all eight. Put all the way out. I think. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, so we, we got two to drop down there. We got one more to drop up this way after this one. That makes three. And then there'll be one down over there and then one by the... Steady. You know, we've actually, we have, we've, we've gone right the way through here as well without it catching on anything. So it does appear that this machine is now a lot better. This transport trader is definitely considerably better than what it used to be back in FS17. I'm, I'm really pleased with that because I did not like, I like the idea behind it in FS17, but I despised the machine itself. I, I genuinely did. The, the trailer itself... I thought it was absolutely awful. It was suitable for some very small machinery. And there is the cotton at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Which is a little bit late for us to get started with now. So I will bring you round there. And I will stop you right there like that. We won't start cotton harvesting yet. And I will bring you back over here. And we can race back down to the dealership once more. I'll use the road this time. I'll bring you onto there like that. And... I'm not going to adjust the, the width of it at all. I'll just leave it like that. And we'll run round here following this road. And it should bring us... Oh. I was going to say, it should be nice and easy. But there's cars coming here. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to get past them all. This one... Yeah, actually, this goes right down next to the dealership. We, we, I can go either road, I think. Let's take this road down here because that top road goes further up. This is the one that takes us, brings us out right down next to the dealership, I think. Isn't it? 
Or have I horribly miscalculated? Is this one going to town? Where am I going? Uh. Oh no, that's the saw. I wanted to go on that sawmill road over there. This is. That's the one that there. I should. I could have taken that one, and that would have been a, a, a shortcut from here. And this one is going right back to the beginning of our fields again. So yeah, I definitely took a wrong. I'm not familiar with the roads over that side. I should try to get a little bit more familiar with them, and then I wouldn't have these issues of um, getting lost and, and taking wrong turns. That's all right. We'll do that next time. We've got to deliver one more up at that top end anyway, so maybe we'll go along the road to do that one. And a slightly different route to the route we're taking right now. Right. For once, I'm not even going to pretend that I am still in the middle of a recording session. I have started a fresh recording session at the beginning of the next week. And... I'm carrying on from there. So I'm going to keep doing what I was doing, but the reason that I'm not pretending that uh, I'm, I'm still just recording the same episode is because of the huge announcement that you will all have no doubt already heard about. And that is the release of Seasons. And that's why I'm not even bothering to pretend that I'm, I'm still doing a recording and everything, because... This release changes everything. It literally changes everything. It's not going to change what we're doing right here, right now, but what it does change is our plans. Now, I was going to be moving from here onto a new map, and that new map was going to be all about very big machinery. I got the map already picked out. I think it was the second map that was ever released onto uh, the Mod Hub. Uh, uh, Alps northwest by the coast or something like that i'm not quite sure exactly what it was but uh, I, I can never remember quite what the name is um i know what the map is but i can never quite remember what the name is um so i was still planning to do that and i would still like to do that series but it now very much depends on what happens with seasons um one of the I've been I've looked through all the notes that they released about seasons and what they said about it. And one of the big things at the moment is that uh, it should be able to be played on just about any map. It will be able to be played on the default maps just without anything extra. Um, but some of the like the the mod maps are now. I think they're going to need something more. There's like an extra layer or something that's got to be put in so that stuff can rot down properly. And that's the bit that I'm not too sure about at the moment. Is whether or not we're going to be waiting for that before I do my very big series. Uh, and like to do the snow masks and stuff as well. I, I'll need to look into it a little bit more. At the moment... Um, I'm sort of thinking that we won't go to the planned map for doing all the big machinery on, on the... Well, there we go, folks. I'm afraid that's it. We've run out of time, which means that we need to head on home. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.